let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of a brand new day. We thank you for a brand new month. Father, we thank you for your continued love for us. Even though we are not perfect, even though we fall short every once in a while, you still continue to bless us. You still continue to love us. You still continue to renew your, your mercies for us. <clears throat> you still continue to be faithful for us, to us each and every day. We thank you. We bless you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory because you are such a good and faithful God to us. Father, today we, we commit this morning program, morning devotion program into your hands. We, we invite you to take a seat at the table. We pray that you will you will you will bless each and every participant on this on this platform this morning. That you, you will show us something new, something new today that will not leave this platform the same. That will be refreshed, that will be nourished, and we will be will be a new person today because of because of the of the messages, because of the of the ministration, because of the blessings that you're going to share on us today. We thank you for your love for us, Father. Incline your ears towards each and every one of us here today. Hear, hear us, hear our cries, hear, hear our prayers, hear our requests, hear our troubles hear our worries, and, and, and answer us. We thank you. We, we give you all the glory. Give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Um, hello, good morning. You're all welcome once again to the Morning Devotion platform. Um, today be, being the, the first of a new month, um, the program is usually slightly different and will go st straight to our Bible reading uh, for this morning. Uh, this morning, morning's Bible reading is taken from Psalm 5, verses 1 to 12. Psalm chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. And um, our sister, sister JBK will be helping us with the reading this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Psalm 5, verses 1 through 12. Give here to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For to you I will pray. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. Verse 4. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. You shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. Verse 7. But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship towards your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. Verse 9. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is destruction. Their throat is an open tomb. They flatter with their tongue. Pronounce them guilty, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions. For they have rebelled against you. Verse 11. But let all those who rejoice put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy. Because you defend them, let those also who love you, your name, be joyful in you. The final verse, verse 12. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word for our own edification. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for uh, reading the, the word for us this morning, Sister JPK. Um, we shall now go into the uh, the charge for this morning and uh, this morning's charge will be delivered by our own senior pastor pastor Sun pastor tunji let us uh, receive and welcome him praise the lord god is the good god uh, i want to briefly charge us on something today on the purpose of praise and worship may pretty much the purpose of worship 
those praises inside the worship. It's simply worshiping God, which goes much more than singing to him anyway. It is focusing on the object and subject of our worship. More often than not, in what we call our worship these days, even the object of our worship is not there. And it's important for us to refocus on the object and the subject of our worship. The only way to know God is through the Bible, pure and simple, because that's where his word is laid out. That's where his mind is expressed to us in written form. Not only his mind about you and I, also his mind about the world, about creation, about God himself laid out all that. So it's important if you really want to know who God is and what it's like to be conversant with the words of the Bible. And that's why we always encourage every believer to make sure you read the Bible through at least once a year. And in so doing, you begin to increase the in knowledge of him. To be sincere, and I've seen this over the years, what most of us think worship is, is not even worship. You have to know God in order to be able to worship Him, in order to worship Him. Because you can only worship to the degree that you know someone, that's how it goes. The less you know about a person, the less you can worship them. I know that will sound strange, worship a man, okay, just follow me. Most of us have this problem with worshiping God, really myself, all of us, you come to understand that. Because worshiping God is much more than what we think. Look at it this way. The person you know most is the one you normally have no problem appreciating. Simply because the, 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 the level of your knowledge of that person is greater than every other person in your life. So you talk more of that person, you refer more to that person, you make reference more of that person. Because you well know that person, and most of his impact and good experiences of your life are from and of that person. That's what we're talking about. If you have somebody preaching, or particularly I'm preaching, and you hear me say, my bishop said this, my bishop said that, well, that's the major impact on me in that, in that area. So without thinking it, it comes out naturally. It's the same with God. And it's simply because as men, and when I mean men, I'm talking of human beings, we pretty much appreciate those who have done a lot for us. The person you know the most is the one you talk about the most. So your knowledge of the people determines the ease or your ease of appreciation in life. And that's where attraction 
of the means of appreciation, the vehicle of appreciation comes in. So the first thing I'll talk today is on that vehicle, is focusing on the attraction of the means of worship. It will help us to shed more light into why mostly what we call worship today is not really worshiping God. Simply put, I've always said people when you even pick songs, what the wordings of those songs. Some are not even talking about God. Pretty much maybe they are talking about ourselves, about how we feel, about who we are. If you are talking about yourself, how do you call that one of God? Then you can picture that. Please hear me this morning. I'm, I'm pretty much inside what I'm teaching. It's not condemning. Like Jesus said, I, I, I didn't come to condemn anybody, but we, 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 we teach the truth. What has been happening for so long is making the means the end. When I mean the means, the means of worship, the attraction of worship, the process of worship itself, making it the worship itself. And in so, in so doing, we waste time, energy, resources, and that's for anything in life where you make the means the end. We have so much preoccupy ourselves with the means over the end when it comes to worship. Look at me say a few times, look at the scriptures we read today. Let's go to the Old Testament. Let's pick the Psalms. <laughs> or we pick the prayers in the Bible. These were not men reading those prayers from a book. No. It was coming from their own inside direct and then it's written. See the way words are put together in the Psalms. It's not as if they, they read a book and then they are preaching it. No, 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 no. It was, there was no book. If you if now you begin to understand me, those were words directly flowing from their heart. I see some prayers in Prodigals. You can't even say there was a preparation. They gather and they began to pray, and these words were coming from them. We're so privileged today that we have all such references. But we lack what is flowing from our own heart directly to it. We are so preoccupied with the means. So doing it, rather than what is done itself. And when you talk of what is done or the end, we are talking of purpose now. Purpose has to do with the end. So we say the purpose of worship now. We know about the means. We celebrate the means a lot. But then the purpose, is it accomplished? A lot of us struggle because we keep doing things without knowing why. It is said purpose is the discovery of the reason or the end result, the discovery of the thing. I don't want you to miss what I'm saying this morning because it's so critical for you and me because we are we are so conversant with the means. 
In fact, we have so decor when it comes to worship, we have so decorated the means. The music has to be right. The voice has to be this way. We have to turn it that way. And that's not the purpose. <laughs> I thank God the Bible didn't say, the Bible says, make a joyful noise. <laughs> noise, you know what noise is. There is no rhythm. Of course, we celebrate rhythm. I'm not, a, don't, that's why I said, don't misunderstand me. But you see, when you celebrate the means more than the end, it loses its purpose. So much Preparation and preoccupation goes into the means. But like I told you, all those things we sing, all the songs we sing from the Psalms, we recite from the Psalms. You can imagine after they came out of the Red Sea, Miriam began to sing. She wasn't reading it somewhere. It wasn't prepared from somewhere. It was coming from inside her. Deep, deep from inside. You can go, I believe that should be Exodus 15, the about. And you see a lot of things like that. That's why the Bible says there is a spirit in man, but the inspiration of the Almighty gives it understand. When the song becomes more important than the one you are singing to, the entire worship experience is aborted. When the words of the song is celebrating you and I, celebrating all, celebrating our environment, celebrating what we do, then the person we claim to be singing of or singing to, it loses its purpose. As I was going through this, this morning, well, my heart was heavy because a lot of us have been in church for so long and you come, you know what I'm about to say. When can we truly say we had the presence of God today? Because listen to me very carefully. I know we say that often, but you see, the presence of God is real. Maybe if very few times we've experienced it. You can explain it, but <laughs> when it comes, you know. But you, it never leaves you the same. You never truly experience that presence and remain the same that day, never. You never truly be in that presence and your pains go through with you or your body continues with you, never. So how often <laughs> are you truly say you, you, you leave service, say, oh, it was so exciting today, but you are still the same. It was exciting for you, it was exciting for me. But we were not in his presence. We conjoy it, we try to bribe him with ceremonies, but you know, God is beyond all that. The process. to take us to the purpose. But the process to never become the purpose in itself. And what I'm saying, saying about myself with all of us put together because we are all in this thing. So what's your purpose? In, in, in our subconscious mind, 
Many of us feel we have done what we have to do. I mean, I go to church regularly, pay my tithes, give offering. What again does God want from me? That's the mentality. We don't say. That's why I use the word subconscious. Oh, I read the Bible, I attend money devotion daily, I do all this. Ceremonies. Those are means. But is the purpose accomplished? Those are not the purpose. Those are not the end result. Those are means. So we feel we've done that on Sunday. Let's live my life the way I want throughout the whole week. What's the big deal? I, I, I'm still better than all that. I go to church regularly at least. So we carry that in our subconscious mind. But you see, those are means. Where is the end result? Okay, we are in church, but did God show up? No pastor will tell you God didn't show up. Everybody will say God is here. But I know, you know. <laughs> if he shows up, things will change. Whether God showed us or not, it's not as that important to us as to the things we do consistently with it. We we'll go through the process. Whatever the process is, I tell people. You go to church on a Sunday morning, once a week, then two hours, is that all? For the whole week. Is that all? That's why. <laughs> The Lord Jesus Christ made a statement. Of course, we jump it. We don't really, because he was saying it to some people. He said, you worship, you know not what. After all, I go to church. In fact, I go to a lot of other fellowships with it during the week. I do more than most people. You don't say it, but it's there. And I say, God, I think that should be okay with you. But what's the purpose of going there when you never met him? I mean, truly met him. Most of the times, we don't really come to a meeting to meet with God. We go to a meeting to do meeting <laughs> in church. It's because the meeting, we have substituted it to be the purpose. David said, my soul touched for thee. My soul touched for thee. My flesh longs for you. When I go there, I go to look for you. I go to encounter you. I go to have a thought of you. I go to, let me use the word of Jesus. I go to touch your garment practically. We do ceremony. When the purpose, I mean the process, becomes more important than the purpose. A great man of God said, then idolatry is created. When more worth is placed on the means than on the head, that's idolatry. I must tell you the truth, being in church and in our various fellowships is not enough for us. Just being there is not enough. There has to become an end to it, a purpose for it. We worship, as we say. We celebrate just being there. Please forget about the timing today. We'll close on time. But the Lord gave me this. I have to see where I end up with it. You know the word worship 
is derived from two words, worth, value, and ship. Worth, worth, ship. Worth is the value equivalent to that of someone or something, this dictionary now, under consideration. So whatever you place more what on becomes, more than God becomes an idol. That's actually how it is. I'm going to jump. Please bear with me. And like I'm saying, I'm not blaming anybody, but the way the Lord opened it to me, I have to say it. Because it's actually about worshiping God. It has to be peculiar to you if I be had. Because it has to proceed from your soul, from your heart of heart. The Bible says, Deep call it unto deep as the noise of the waterfall. Let me give you a picture because you see. Judge yourself, the Bible says, and you shall not be judged. Oh, we had a great time. It was a great service. Good. But what changed? Did you really change? Were you really imparted? If you say you were, where is the proof? You know, there's a young man in the Bible. His name is called Gideon. The angel came to him and said, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. He said, excuse me, wait, I'm not fake. If God is with me, then why have all these befallen us? Where are his miracles, which our father told us? And they also say, you get it, you get it. Go in this time, man. A lot of us don't question our so-called worship and church existence. You, I don't mean question it for question it. I mean question it for you. There is the proof of it. Can a man truly be in the presence of God and remain the same? I'm going to jump to something that uh, we used to uh, communicate it maybe a bit better. You know, it is written, thou art worthy to receive glory. He is the one who is to receive it. Honor, glory, honor, power, dominion. He is worthy to receive it. So are we truly giving it to him? Because worship is determined by what. You can never worship what you don't have what. Some of the songs we sing, even when the words are right, because the heart is not there, God don't even hear. How much more when the words are way out? We've made the sound more important than the one we are singing it about. Even in prayer, for example, we are so preoccupied as to how we pray the prayer. <laughs> Concerned about the words we put together in praying the prayer, than about who we are praying to. Uh, Anna, the mother of Samuel, tell me, where were the words? The Bible says her lips move, her voice was not even heard. But she, has the, she had the loudest voice that God could not but hear. You know what I mean by that? Because it was coming <laughs> directly from here. From, from her. He said, I'm, I've just poured out my soul before. You met him.
I've always loved the way I see men pray in the Bible with their own words. That's why one day all of you will have experienced it. You, you, you happen to get into it one day and you know you are there. And then the following day, everything is still dry. But you know there was something you connected with that day. Is that thing I want you to connect with on a consistent basis. Raw from the heart. Take modernization out of it. Take fashion out of it. That people are my number one judge. You have to keep checking yourself. You have to check yourself whether you be in the faith. Judge yourself. You have to say, for God is king of all the earth. Praise the Lord with understanding. Let me give you an example of what I'm trying to say. This morning devotion program, for example. How do you introduce it to your family or friends and invite people for it? What do you say? You will now see where I'm going, which means an end. Do you say, oh, I really want you to be part of this, our program. It's really good. It's exciting. You know, we, we, we hear the word every, song, every time. We, we, we do this. We do that. It's a really good program. I know that's what you say. I've said it to some people too. Or rather, do you say? Or before I even go into that, say, look, I really enjoy that program. I'm really enjoying it. It's a wonderful program. It's interesting. Then, what's my language? It becomes more of the program than the one we are gathering onto. Let me give you a picture of another angle. I'd like to invite you to a program that will really help you align yourself with God every morning. Because God commands us to come before him morning by morning. That changes everything. It's now about him and you connecting with him. And truly, that's what God says. You need to spend your waking morning in his presence. The morning by morning, he waking at my year to year. And the Lord Jesus Christ will wake up a, 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 a while before dawn. My voice shall down here in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee. And you see, and as I was going through all this in the night, and I was saw something. Most of God's encounter with men individually, check your Bible, it's in the morning. Our covenant fathers, we have seen it from scripture, our early risers. And you see, that now, and I went back to my notes on this morning devotion program, and I think I have it somewhere here. Uh, is this? Yeah. And those of you who are here from the beginning, you will remember what I said. And what I said, God told me. He said, many people want to do this program. I'm uh, sorry, do devotion. They don't know how to do it. Some wake up, kneel on my bed, a few words of prayer, or as best read some Bible, and they're gone. No structure, no impact. And he said to me, I want you to bring these people before me every morning. And he told me also another word, I need you to put structure into it. And like I told you, I bought a book. I thought this would be very easy to do. I didn't get the format until he gave me this format. And when I see tell some people, and I'm sure you have told some people, they told you, money devotion, one hour, that's too long. That's what they are God, though. The same people that will sit around with friends for two hours and not feel that they have done anything. But that's who we are. 
that's who we are. I've had pastors here in this town tell me, what? Well, I just we do 15 minutes morning devotion. One hour is too long. And all of you have been on this program, you know, before you even know it, the one hour is off. Oh, it's God we are talking about. What is his work? What if goes with what? It has to be about him. If it is not about him, it is not worship to him. And I told you, One thing God told me about this morning, and that's why I told you, I said the, the, the personal moment we pray is the most important part of the program. Many of you have heard me say it many times, but maybe you didn't take notice of it. I said it's the whole essence because God told me, I want to hear from them directly. Bring them to talk to me. So when if we put that, and I notice sometimes when, I, when we are praying, some people are checking out during that time because that's the time you, he wants to hear from you directly. Oh, they are finished the preaching. They are finished the message. Some people just take out. That's the most important part. You lose that, you lose the purpose. He told me I had it. And we had always say, I would say, this personal prayer is the essence of the morning devotion. It's because that's what he told me. Because God would love to hear from you directly. He thought... I, 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 Pastor Jesus is here. We always say, hey, hey, stop. It's not about the preaching. So the preaching, we just say, okay, we pick a word from the preaching you pray. But the real essence of the personal moment is you. The way it touches you from your heart. The way it matters to you. What your situation is. Your father wants to hear from you. But that's the time some people feel, oh, I can still do some other things before they come and give us the blessing. The blessing is gone. Of what is your song from your heart? Your word. Of course, we. We bring songs together, we sing. Don't misunderstand me. And if you watch this morning devotion, those songs are carefully selected. I do them by myself. They have to be singing of him or your commitment to him. I'm not perfect yet, but I try. We have to still bring songs that people have brought together for us. The center point of it all, but the word from your heart. I'm going to praise him again today by the songs we put together. And some of you have heard me, maybe sometimes you just don't take note of what I say. I would say, look, no, you can sing your own, no, just mute this one and sing your own if it's coming from your heart, or let's worship it. When you are doing it, but not from your heart, it's not worship. When you are doing it and it's not real to you, it's not from you inside to him. Mm -mm. You enjoy the music. We enjoy the music. We are, we are all, we are all in the same boat together. Some even discard. They use the music. They don't even hear the words. They just discard the words. Maybe they like the music or they don't like the music. Just mute it and bring your own from your heart. The word, because it is for him. Your experiences with God, how are they like? Do you truly meet him? Does he truly hear you when you pray? Oh, every time we pray, including myself, and when we finish, we thank God God has had us. Uh, okay. I have a passion to just be who God wants me to be and to have the best of Him. No fake. 
judge yourself and you shall not be judged. But you see this program, you can take it with passion and turn generations after you with it. You go to a church, I know, but how do you even go? I was listening to the man of God. He say, you're addressing your here, here and everything that you come late to church because of that. That means your dressing and everything has become more important than the one you are going to, than the work, work of the one you are going to meet. That's what you are telling me. That's what you are telling us. God is the one we are after. Ceremony secondly. I don't know whether you had anything here this morning. I can't play the songs I prepared for today because that one is long. I'm just going to pick another one for another day today. And we just worship the Lord together. But I can I just say, if you don't want to just mute it and sing your own. Just have about 10 minutes to do that to the Lord. Just mute it and sing your own from your heart. Who told you you have to sing the songs they have written? Who told you? The ones they were singing in the Bible, who wrote it for them? They sang it from their heart. Thank God. Don't misunderstand me. Thank God for the songs we have here. They help us a great deal. What is your heart saying this morning? What is the passion of your heart to him this morning? Who is he to you this morning that you want to celebrate his work? And I tell you, you will never lack words to say that. It will flow. God help us. God help us. Let's just sing some songs together. Oh, glory to God. God help us. Let me pick one here. It's just about 10 minutes. Glory to God. I saw mercy. Mercy seated where the judge should be was guilty Guilty and getting out of jail free How could it be it didn't get the life I deserved And the only thing he wanted was my heart in return And every time I think about it, every time I thought was the end I'm caught up in wonder again Where would I be?
Just give us ourselves a few moments, everyone. Just worship him with your own words. Worship him the way you feel like. Say it to him the way you want to say it. Tell him of his worth to you. Tell him of his worth in your life. Appreciate him for who he is to you. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We give glory. Unmute yourself. Glory, honor, and praise unto the name of the living God. We thank God so much for this day, the first day of the eighth month of the year. We thank God for bringing us into a new month. We give him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We thank God. God has been with us from the very first day, January 1st, up to today. The Lord has been with you and I. And even as we enter into the new month, I want us to receive the blessing of the Lord. I want us to receive the blessing of the Lord this morning. And this morning, I am reading um, from, I want to read from Deuteronomy chapter 8, from 7 to 10. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 7 to 10, just very briefly, and receive the blessing of the Lord from it. Um, Deuteronomy 7, hold on, I want to make sure that we all can see it so we can appreciate it. So give me a second here. Let me just get it on here so we can all see it. Um. It says, the Lord bringeth thee into a good land, a land 
of brooks of water. Let me just pull it up quickly so we can read it here. He says, for the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, olive, and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are high on and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he had given thee. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for bringing us into the new month of August 2023. Father, we declare this month, O oh God, the good land that you have brought us into, a land of brooks of water, a land of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, olive, and honey, a land wherein we shall eat bread without scarceness, and we shall not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills we will dig brass. And when we are eaten and asked for, then we shall bless you, the Lord our God, for the good land which you have given us. Father, we declare this month a month of your blessings. A month, that, Lord, you will visit us to God. A land of change of level, change of circumstance to God. A land, a, a month of God's presence, God's blessings, God's enlargement upon us to God. Father, this day, open the heavens to God and pour out a blessing unto our lives to God. Oh, evident by change of circumstance to God, change of situations to God. Grant us your mighty breakthroughs this month to God. Empower us to God. Go before us in a pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Bless us in this this month to God. Father, we declare this month a month of God's miracles, God's signs and wonders and miracles in our lives. A, a, a month of restoration, a month of increase. The same power that came upon the five loaves and two fishes that increased and fed 5,000 men, women and children. Father, we declare that exponential power upon our hands this month. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank God. We receive the blessing of the Lord. We receive the increase of the Lord this month. This month, the Lord shall give us rest all around rest. All around us. This month, the Lord shall cause us to possess the gates of our enemies. This month, the Lord shall cause us to collect the spouse of war. We shall possess the gates of our enemies and we shall possess the prosperity of our enemies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. As we know, this program runs Monday through Friday from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Mountain Time. And we are encouraged to invite friends and family. Let's do that and the Lord will continue to bless us. Let us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you and I. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day.